Hello, everybody, and a welcome to Brighter UI's quarterly release for designers. My name is Hua Yun, Senior Designer at Brighter UI. It's been a while since we last did a design-specific release announcement, but we've recently had a few interesting updates, some from Brighter UI, others coming from external resources such as Material Design and Figma. And today, I would like to explain how these changes will impact you in the future as a designer. Today, we'll be visiting four different topics, icons, material design, accessibility, and Figma. If you're watching on YouTube, we have marked this video in different sections, so feel free to skip ahead if you think you are already familiar with this topic. Now, without further ado, let's jump into it. During Q3, we were able to bring in our inner source, nine new icons into the brighter UI design system thanks to the wonderful contribution from the Champ Lighting team. They are mostly related to some outlet products from Eaton, with one extra icon reflecting the look of a hazardous light product from the Champ team. Icons are wonderful. They can be used for a lot of things, from clarifying an interaction, to a guidance to manage a user's attention, an icon button that users can click on, to even use decoratively and cheer up your users. You see them everywhere. However, in the past few years, we've noticed through our design audits that many icon abuses, where icons are used when they should have been using text instead, as shown by this example on the left, or the interface designer selected the wrong icon, as shown on the right. And that is why in Q3, we release the guidelines for you to examine the use of icons in your application. Icon guidelines. This quarter, we added an extensive best practices for how to use icons. You can either check it via this link, or you can also go visit our website, click on the style guide, and navigate to icon guidelines. So what's in icon guidelines? Well, it's a very extensive guide that's a structure similar to how we do the design patterns. That includes things like when to use icons, how to use icons, universal icons that will carry the same meaning no matter what application you're in, the variations of icons, and finally, guidelines and the rules in designing your icons. One thing I would like to call special attention to is the last item, guidelines and the rules in designing your own icons. As you know, Brighter UI has always been a resource platform. We give resource, design resources and developer resources for product teams to build their own product. However, recently, we would like to introduce ourselves to the role of governance in order to standardize the usability to ensure that everyone is doing the best practices among all the users who's using Brighter UI. And that is why we require you now that you must test your own new icons through usability testing either by asking participants questions such as, what do you think this icon represents? Or by observing them completing a task using the icon. We also encourage you to test the icon next to other visually similar icons. For icons that are meant to be used inside buttons, especially those that are designed to be verb icons, you, they should be tested at 16 by 16 as well, in addition to the traditional 24 by 24 density pixels to ensure that they are still legible at a rel relatively small size. Speaking of design guidelines, some of you might already heard about Material Design 3. If you don't know how Brighter UI is related to Material Design, Material Design is Google's design system, but without any Google's branding elements in it. Right later, UI extends on top of Material Design, using Material Design as the foundation while adding UI elements specific to electrical industry to build this complete design system for Eaton applications. The idea here is to reuse what's widely already reused and then recognizable across the industry and to focus our effort entirely on only on what makes Eaton unique. As a user of Brighter UI design system, you should use Brighter UI as your primary source of reference. If Brighter UI does not provide a specific guideline, then you should go check out the material design as your next place for design guidelines. 
That said, however, in May of 2021, Google announced Material Design 3, which comes with a major update in design principles and changes the style of a lot of components. Noticeably, things that make Material Design 2 iconic in the design industry, such as elevations, activated states, design tokens, rounded corners, and dynamic colors are all getting changed. Recently, they pulled the trigger to officially switch from Material Design 2 to this newly designed Material Design 3. And because Bright Layer UI inherits everything from Material Design, this update can have a profound impact on our platform. We're still evaluating the impact of this update, but we are already making small steps to understand design principles of Material Design 3, such as the use of design tokens to communicate. Have you ever had that situation where you just freshly open up a Figma file and you look up the color palette and wonder which color exactly to choose? And you just browse through thousands of hundreds of millions of different existing colors until you roughly grasp the idea of, yeah, the color is black 500. The, well, the background seems to be white 200, but I'm not sure it's not consistent. We fixed this problem. In this upcoming future release, we will be introducing design tokens inspired directly by Material Design 3. So no more of that use black 500 for text color thing that you have to remember. Now you have to, now all you have to know is this is text primary, this is text secondary. Here we are using background default and here the divider, we are using the divider color. One advantage of this is it's based entirely on MUI or also formerly known as Material UI. We're using their models to build up this color token system. So if you have to communicate with your developers, you can simply say, hey, this color is the same color as the divider colors in the theme technically. And that will be a one-to-one -one match with what they have in the code. Another big future release is our accessibility update. So first, what exactly is accessibility? Well, it is the practice, the design of user, your user interface to ensure that it can be used without major trouble by as many audiences as possible, in particularly those users that may have visual or cognitive impairment. WCAG, which is a work group under W3C, has a series of guidelines on how to make your web page meet the accessibility guideline. And in fact, they are so famous that there's just so many countries as shown on by the map on the right here, that they are making rules by directly by the federal government that says if you, your product is not meeting the accessibility guideline, then your user has the right to sue you. So what's in it? Well, one critical aspect of accessibility is color contrast. In short, the radio of foreground brightness against the background brightness needs to be larger than 4.5 to 1 for most texts and 3 to 1 for icons. So take the examples on the right. Uh, the example on the left side is passing the accessibility requirements because it's, con it's color contrast is 9.26 to 1. It's very nice and crispy. While the example on the right is way more dull or more gray and therefore feels foggy and has a low contrast. So how does this have to do with Brightly UI? Brian Lear UI identified some accessibility flaws in the existing themes. Some common UI colors seem to lack sufficient contrast. This is due to some legacy reasons that when color palettes are first defined, they are primar the primary goal is to match with what we have in the branding and that we didn't, back then we didn't really take into consideration for how colors are related to each other. We'll be implementing new color palettes and themes in 2023. Now this change will be strictly visual. Most changes will be around blues and the gray and blacks. So 
as you can see on the example on the right, the top one is the current existing theme, and the bottom one is what it will look like after an accessible theme update. You will notice that the blues are getting a lot darker, and in fact, it's matching what the kind of blue hue you get on, at eating.com. You also notice the text gets a lot darker than before, and that even the gray text are getting more legible. Most challenges will be happening on the design side. We'll make an identical copy of the existing Figma library that everyone is familiar with and mark this file as deprecated. You can still use this deprecated old library, but be aware that there will be no future updates. Meanwhile, we'll be updating the original file directly to using the new accessible theme and publish all the changes at once around the middle of 2023. Since May 2022, Figma has announced a series of really exciting, exciting updates to its users. This include outer layout, single-sided borders, sections, videos, embedding, and dark themes. So if you're a Figma user and not sure what these are, definitely check them out in the Figma release notes at releases.figma.com. Some other releases that makes componentizing things even more powerful is some advanced properties that they've recently announced. Specifically, you can now have text properties, instance properties, and Boolean properties. And a parent can also choose to expose a nested property from its child. So as you can see on the right here, you can. this is our empty state component. Not only can you update, let's see, not only can you update things like instances to a new icon, but also you can toggle this description on and off. You can change description directly in the sidebar. You can also toggle menu. You can also toggle button, which will show additional props that this MP state got from the button component. Try it out and you will see it yourself. We are all these new features will be released soon prior to the accessibility update that we talked about before. So you'll be expecting a pretty major update with a lot of breaking changes from Brighter UI in probably two or three weeks, but don't sweat about it. And that's everything we have to say today. So to recap today, we talked about icons and icon guidelines. We talked about Material Design 3. We talked about the accessibility issues. And finally, these new and exciting updates from Figma. Definitely spread this video around to anybody you think should watch it. And if you write any code, check out our developer announcement for Q3 as well. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy.